I, look, it's early. This could very well be my favorite Batman movie. This is going to be a good day. What is going on, everyone? My name is Joe, and this is Different Take. If this is your first time here, don't forget to like and subscribe, and remember to click the bell so you don't miss out on any new content. The Batman came out this weekend, so Friday night. Speaking of, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of The Batman, if you've seen it. This movie was everything I expected, and somehow, some way, better than I expected. I don't know how Matt Reeves pulled it off, but he did. It is the most realistic and grounded Batman movie to date. I mean, this could very well be, I, and look, it's early. It's, it's very early. And I know I'm just coming off of emotions. I just watched it last night and everything, but it's like, this could very well be my favorite Batman movie. Bullshit! How can it be bullshit to state a preference? And I know, I, I know the Nolan trilogy. I love the Nolan trilogy. I'm just saying, it's, this movie is everything I've ever wanted in a Batman movie for as long as I can remember. You know, and people may love Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy more. And look, to be clear, I love Nolan's trilogy. Some people may like Tim Burton's movies more. I mean, it, it, it all depends. But Nolan's trilogy, those were like epic movies, like epic, huge movies. Not like Zack Snyder, over the top epic, or like, you know, Marvel epic. It was more grounded, Nolan's trilogy. Reese's Batman is, is grounded first. It's grounded in reality with like a little dash of epic here and there. That's the major difference. For example, with Batman's tech and gadgets, usually he has all this different stuff and he overwhelms his enemies. And he has some of this stuff in this movie, but it's not a whole lot. So when he finally does use a gadget, it's like, whoa, it's like that wow moment. The action scenes and, and just scenes in general were all grounded. They were gritty. I mean, it felt real. The hand-to-hand -hand combat fight scenes were so good. And I'm going to say this right now, it's the best we've seen in a Batman movie ever. We've never really seen Batman fight hand-to-hand -hand shot like this. It wasn't like too close in to where you didn't know what was going on and it wasn't cutting constantly. It was like wide shots where you could see him and his enemies go. And it's like, you're in there, you're in there, but you can see what's going on and you can actually see him move and fight and get hit. It was a completely different approach, but I loved it. I loved the pace and the tone of this movie. It was dark. Oh, it was dark, but it had some nice dark humor sprinkled in to lighten the mood just a little bit, but it wasn't completely over the top and it wasn't too much. It didn't completely change the tone. It, it fit right in with the movie. The pace and the tone was just slow and methodical, like the Riddler or even Batman himself, because that was another interesting thing. There were some very, very interesting parallels between the two characters. Look, I'm gonna quote my good friend Liz, and Liz, if you're out there, I don't wanna say your last name, so you can comment down below and uh, take credit for this, because this is her quote, not mine. The desperation, mistrust, empathy fatigue, and anger all felt real, from main characters to side characters. Liz, you nailed it. You absolutely nailed it. I couldn't have said it better myself. Batman and people in general in this movie, they got hurt physically and mentally, just things just did not look so easy for Batman or the people of Gotham in this movie. I mean, you saw poverty and homelessness and things affecting Gotham that were pointing at problems, but it wasn't completely overdone and over the top. It was subtle. I really love the subtle references to Bruce's PTSD with what happened to his family. I mean, like the one shot early on when he sees the kid and, you know, it kind of has a slow zoom. And there's another shot later on when he sees something, his eyes get real big. I mean, that's a really telling scene. I mean, the eyes are just, it, it's amazing. But Matt Reeves doesn't have to show you what happened to the Wayne family for the 20th time. We've seen it so many times already. I mean, he lets Bruce's eyes and body language show you what he's feeling. Another thing that I liked was that Batman was not perfect from a physicality standpoint, but also from a morality perspective. He messes up a good amount. I mean, he's young, he's dumb. <laughs> I mean, he's not dumb, but you know, he's, he's still figuring things out. He hasn't figured out the whole stealth thing yet. He just walks up to a group of thugs or walks right into a club. And <laughs> that may not be the best approach, but he don't know any better. It's like, bro, you have all these different gadgets. There might be a better approach to this, but he doesn't care. He's, he's vengeance. He's so angry and young and just wants to go in there and start swinging fists and start beating people up. And 
doesn't really care about the toll that it's taken on his body at this point because he's young. And we do that when we're young. And then when we get older and we're like, oh, that was a mistake. Speaking of bats and Bruce, I absolutely love this version of Bruce Wayne. Matt Reeves essentially took the very small section of Batman Begins where he was going to kill the guy who killed his parents. And Reeves essentially took that particular part and just expanded on that part of Bruce Wayne's life. I mean, he really dug deeper and darker with it. The story was gripping and compelling, and it kept escalating more and more as the movie went on. Just when you think it's really hitting, you know, the point, it just gets just, and it doesn't really sort of let up. So it didn't feel like a three-hour movie. It might have felt like a three-hour movie to some people, but to me, I just kept getting just more just compelled by the story. It's like this crime, noir, detective feel to it. But it also felt like a serial killer type movie. I mean, I love the Zodiac 7, I don't want to say Saul, but there's one aspect of it that kind of maybe feels like Saul, but it's more like Zodiac and 7. Also the mob aspect of it, the organized crime aspect of it. I mean, it just felt like four, maybe five different movies all combined into one, but it did not seem all over the place, which is really telling of the talent of the director, Matt Reeves. The cinematography was insanely good. There's so many excellently framed shots, but the movie did not feel too pretty. That's the thing. I'm, and again, make clear, I love Nolan's trilogy, but even though it was grounded, it was very pretty, very polished. And this movie did not feel that way. It was gritty and it was rough looking. I mean, you felt like you were in it, man. You felt like you were in there, like right in the gutter in Gotham. You felt like you were there. I and mean, I cannot state how important and impressive it was to pull that off. The scenes were dark and dingy and dirty. Speaking of, Gotham was perfect. Perfect. It felt like Gotham from Tim Burton's movies a little bit and the comics and that overall architecture that you have in those movies mixed with Nolan's Gotham and present day New York. So it felt like a real physical place that you know, you know of. The musical score was outstanding and it may be the least talked about aspect of this movie speaking of i'm pretty sure we got some of catwoman's original theme from batman returns i could be wrong but i swore i heard it in there the acting in this movie jesus christ you kidding me are you kidding me just grab a chair get a pen and paper take some notes because this was acting 101. And what did I say about underestimating Robert Pattinson? And there were some other people out there who did too. What did we say? Did we tell you he was going to pull it off? Did we tell you he's going to be fine? He's a great actor. Paul Dano as the Riddler was amazing. Amazing. He was everything I wanted and more. I loved how scary and unhinged the Riddler was. There were moments in this movie where he legit freaked me out. I, you just, you didn't know what he was going to do next. Saying it right now, Paul Dano is, I mean, there's only two Riddlers, but Paul Dano is my favorite Riddler. Zoe Kravitz was fantastic as Selena. And to be honest, she might be my favorite Catwoman. Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright was so good as Gordon. Completely caught me off guard. I know he's a good actor, but this is a character that we've seen portrayed in, in a specific way. And he kind of leaned into that a little bit, but he also played it his own way. He did such a good job. He may have the most underrated and unappreciated performance of this movie. John Turturro was great as Falcone. Colin Farrell was excellent as Oz or Penguin, whatever. You're watching this movie and you're watching him on screen and you literally forget that it's Colin Farrell. I mean, that's because, not just because of the makeup, his performance, his voice, and the way he portrays the character, you just get lost in it and you forget that it's him. And let us not forget Andy Serkis as Alfred. Can we all agree that Andy Serkis and Jeffrey Wright too are two very, very underrated actors, criminally underrated. I mean, the whole cast was just stellar. It was such a well-casted movie. There were so many well-acted scenes and tense moments where I, I literally could not take my eyes off the screen. The whole theater I looked around at one point, it was just like the whole theater is just locked in on this movie. I mean, for me, out of five stars, I'm not going to lie. It might be five stars. It might be five out of five. I could be fanboying out here, but I, I don't care. I, I don't really care. I don't care. I do not see a flaw with this movie. And if there is a flaw there, it's minuscule. And if you go back to movies that are rated five stars or whatever, they have flaws too. 
They all do. I just do not see. This is such a perfect Batman movie and such a good movie in general. I mean, it's just an incredible movie. And so just bravo. Bravo, Matt Reeves, cast and crew. Bravo. You did it. You absolutely nailed it. If you like my take on the Batman, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on social media for all channel updates in the in-between time. Come join the Facebook group, Different Take Movie Talk, where we talk movies all day, every day. Uh, we're currently talking about the Batman right now. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Later.